Today at Blade HQ, we have Lawrence from Blade Runner Systems. When you handle a, a Bali song, when you're competing, that balance and those little nuances really start to play a critical role. Do you want to see my tricks? Yeah. What is up, guys? Today at Blade HQ, we have Lawrence from Blade Runner Systems. He's all come all the way from New Jersey to come visit us. New Jersey. This is your first time in Utah, right? Uh, it is, yeah. And uh, is. you just had a, a fine Utah staple. I had uh, fry sauce. And? With, um, I had a Utah burger with fry sauce, and I poured more fry sauce on it, and it was amazing. Yes. Yes. He's been initiated. Now Very we're going to talk knives. The, the reason we wanted to have <clears throat> Lawrence on was to kind of learn your story, the, the Blade Runner Systems, the BRS story, and also to look at some of your knives and how they relate to that story. So... Where did you start, Lawrence? What's what's the story, man? Uh, you know, I started a lot like um, probably be the people watching this video. Um, I've always had a passion for knives since I was a, a young kid. And then I fell out of it for a little bit. But when YouTube and the Internet started to, you know, have a lot more social media presence, I started looking at reviews, started looking at them again and re, you know, kindled that interest and um, I found my way into the, the Bali song and shortly after started, you know, got my first one, started flipping, found a small little niche community. And uh, before you knew it, I was just completely uh, consumed by it. Nice. I, I just, I loved it. I, I just obsessed about it. I wanted to make new tricks. I wanted to learn every trick. I started, you know, um, competing with other members of the community. Uh, and, and that's kind of where I met uh, Ed, uh, my partner, co-founder of uh, Blade Runner Systems, and just kind of, you know, went from there. So yeah. you guys kind of started talking, you and Ed, and you said, I, I would imagine the conversation went something like this, like there isn't a perfect butterfly knife out there. Yeah, you know, when you handle a, a Bali song, um, and specifically for the purpose of tricks, and not just basic openings, but like more advanced tricks when you're competing, uh, that balance and those little nuances really start to play um, a, a critical role. And so a lot of the knives that were available at the moment, they were okay, but there was always one or two or three little shortcomings where like, oh, I wish it was a little bit longer, a little bit lighter, uh, maybe a little heavier at this end or that end all these little nuances and what we thought about was you know there really isn't a purpose built you know battle ready knife that's meant just for the you know the spirit and the sport of competition yeah so we want to do that um so that's when you know we started brainstorming and said well what do we like about you know all the knives that we flipped all the flipping experience how do we put that into one package and that's what, essentially yeah, what, what came from it. Show, that's essentially show how the um, <clears throat> how the Alpha Beast was was born. Uh, it, it pretty much took into consideration everything that we as flippers wanted, and the community said that they wanted into a knife longer handles, um, you know, chamfered edges around the handle, feedback points, so you know where you are when you're when you're flipping the the knife. Every single thing in the design of, of our knives is uh, it's not just for looks. Everything served a purpose for the flipper. So um, even these little chevrons, which we're kind of known for now, yeah. these were originally put here so that when you start flipping, uh, you know where you are. Because certain tricks, you have to be closer to the pivots. Other ones, oh, you further. Yeah. So this is actually uh, for reference so that as you're flipping, you know where you are. The slot was for balance and weight distribution, but also when you're holding it in your hand, it serves as kind of a, a point where you can grab it. And the handles have a little bit of a, a, a chamfer so that it's easier in the hand, but also so that you have enough like uh, torque when you do certain tricks. And the latch obviously was designed to click out of the way because so many times we would land almost that perfect area and then the latch would would get stuck, so uh -huh. we designed it so that that wouldn't clicks happen. out of the way. Yeah. Wow. Okay, this is yeah. cool. I because I I mean I've handled I've handled the Alpha Beast before, but I never knew like the design nuances from it. And, and you got Lawrence and I were sitting here talking, 
And you mentioned that you designed this initially. Where did you design it? Uh, so when we set out to design everything, I, I knew precisely uh, what the vision, you know, what Ed and I's vision was for the knife. You know, in terms of length and weight and how you know, thick something should be, what the angle should be. Uh, I did not have a whole lot of experience using CAD or any kind of design program. So a lot of this was uh, hand-drawn, uh, using whatever program was available on my computer. A lot of stuff I had to just Microsoft teach Paint. myself. Yeah, I use paint, <laughs> I use napkins, I use uh, pen and paper, uh, you know, whatever I could to communicate the original design to the manufacturer we had at the time to get it right. And, and you know, we had to obviously get them to kind of put that into uh, design language, sure. right? But, uh, but I think the, the key was we knew our vision very well. Yeah. We knew this is exactly how it has to be. It really can't stray um, away from, from this vision. So yeah. this was one of your original mid-techs, right? Yes. So. Uh, we in initially launched with uh, 12, and then we made 20 more. This is part of that second release. Nice. Um, you know, this is like really the origins of, of the of That's the company. So cool. uh, before we went on to production, this is actually the first Alpha Beast that came off the production line. I thought to bring it alongside this one because it kind of progressed from yeah, mid tech totally. to pro to the production. I, mm. I think even the the mid tech one. There's a there's a finish to this production one that just feels really nice. Um, yeah. Just the chamfers are a little smoother. The the overall feeling to it is really nice. The products have, as they've progressed, have become a little bit more refined, a little bit more fine tuned, but yeah. it never lost any of the the core and the critical performance aspects that we we want in the in the knife. The the balance is the same. Uh, all the features are the same. But yeah, you know, it might just have a little bit more refinement as as we've um, as we've progressed up the line. Nice. Okay, so this this is kind of your origin, somewhere in the middle. Show us this one and what's so changed this is the that um, this is the more of the future. So we originally wanted to design the Alpha Beast as a channel uh, Bali song. Where this one's sandwich construction. And whereas that sandwich, yeah. And Can you give me like a five second, what is sandwich yeah. versus channel? So the main difference, um, I'll hold this up Go here. So if you look at both of these handles here, the sandwich is going to be one uh, piece of a handle, a spacer in the, in the middle right here that's going to hold them together, and then the other handle slab on the other side. And it's all held together, you know, with, with screws. And there are some ad advantages of, of designing a Bali song this way. Uh, a channel Bali song is just one machine piece of titanium. Which takes forever. Expensive, right? It's going to be more expensive, um, but the flipping characteristic of it is just something that if you're, if you're into flipping, even if you're you know, a casual knife user, you can tell right away that it's just this solid piece of tie. It gives like a certain ring and sound to nice. it. It's got this really distinct characteristic that um, some people really look for in a, in a channel Bali song. So you can see this. Uh, another distinct uh, characteristic is this whole side because you don't have this space. Yeah. It's all filled, so when you're flipping it, you can you have all nice. the surface area. Feels really, really slick. Sweet. Yeah. Love it. So these are not cheap, Lawrence. The, we're talking your your knives. Well, we'll talk about the bare bones in a minute, but the bare bones is what over two hundred bucks, right? Uh, the trainer's two hundred. The live one's two twenty five. And we're talking an Alpha Beast is in the four hundred dollar range, it's right? It's gonna start at three seventy is where we have it. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's a ton of money. I'm just gonna say it. How can you describe for somebody who doesn't really know this culture? Why would somebody drop so, so much money on? So I was asked song? that um, uh, a bit at, at, at Blade Show for people who weren't as familiar with the pricing in, in our product, and um, the main thing is number one, it's it's all titanium handles, yeah. titanium titanium spacer, titanium latch, heat treated steel hardware, and we also use heat treated steel bushings. Uh, the steel is 154 cm. It's also heat treated. It's really built 
to be used. Yeah. You know, and, and we obviously have a lifetime uh, limited warranty on, on all our products. This is the first one that came off the assembly line, right? And I flipped the heck out of it. I mean, this thing's been dropped on concrete. Uh, I don't shy away from, from using this one. Uh, you know, it's got to be, what, five, six years old now. And you can, you can tell, like, I didn't yeah. bring a perfectly shiny, I mean, you know, this one's yeah, new, but beautiful. I didn't bring a perfectly shiny one because these really, and when we say they're battle ready, they're battle ready. Like, they're, they're designed to be flipped. Yeah. And for that, uh, for that level of quality, that's the reason why their price may be a little bit higher than what someone might be accustomed sure. to paying for a, for a Bali song. Yeah, I, I would almost, I think for me personally, it's if you're into bicycles, you can buy a $100 bicycle yeah. at, at Walmart. Yeah. And you can be perfectly happy on it. Yeah. But you can't get a good bicycle for $100. And I think right. Bally Songs Butterfly Knives are the same way, where you really have to start, you, you have to make a jump from yep. a $15 Carnival Bally Song, which, hey, that's a great, great way to get into it. And, but you know, we make all our products so when someone picks one up they're just like okay yeah i i get it like yeah. if you jump from i don't know like a budget car and then you go into say uh, a rolls royce i don't think anyone's gonna be like i don't see it you know yeah. what i mean and so for our products we can we safely we, call this the rolls we, royce of i, of I would like to, i would like to to, to believe so i, I mean it. that's that's our mission so that when you pick it up, when you flip it, when you're using it, uh, you don't you don't want to flip anything else. Like yeah. you immediately know and adapt, and it like it, it speaks to you. Yeah. You know, um, our products are pretty much every bit a part of our own uh, selves. You know, and our it's like a manifestation of what who we are as flippers. Yeah. You know who we are in the community, and um, like it may sound kind of weird, but I feel like we can put that in a product. And I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, you know, I, I flipped the uh, replicant, the alpha beast, the bare bones, and it just, nothing else was like it. Like, this is what, this is what I want, Nice, you know? And that's really our mission is that, uh, yes, is it, do you pay a premium over maybe some other knives? Yes, but we want it to be that as soon as you use it, you know why yeah. that, that's the case. Totally. That makes sense. So talk to me about the other knives in your line, the, the other valleys in the line. So after um, Alpha Beast, we went and we did the replicant. Now, this one is also a prototype. This is a hybrid replicant. We call it that because the standard replicant has G10 scales over a tie liner. This has a titanium uh, scale over a titanium uh, liner. But we went to make a knife that had the G10 and titanium uh, combo because it gives a different feel, like a little bit more of a neutral balance. Uh, it also allowed us to give it a, a slightly different handle contour. Uh, some people like a, a, a fatter, like a thicker and um, a little bit higher stacked handle setup. Okay. So that allowed us to, to do that. Um, this one's beautiful. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm really excited about that. And, and the standard replicant um, is, is just such a, a great all-around uh, Bali song. It just performs super balanced, um, not too heavy, not too light. It's, it's like, I call it kind of our, our all-arounder. Kind of a Goldilocks. Yeah, exactly. And that was kind of the mission is to make something that uh, was very similar to the Alpha Beast. Yeah but had its own distinct handling characteristic. Nice. And then from there, bare bones. We went to bare bones. Because as you said, you know, 370, or in, in the replicant's case, starting at 270, is a bit... It's spendy. It's a little spendy, if, especially if you're starting. So yeah, absolutely. we always got hit up with the question, well, you know, I want to start, but where do I start? Some of your knives are expensive. So bare bones mission was to give the audience and someone who wanted to get into the sport of, of body slum flipping um, that wanted a quality knife too, uh, but didn't have to you know, spend over $300, right? So we made the, the bare bones. This, in this case, it's the trainer. Um, Which I love, by the way. Yeah. I, it, yeah. 
<laughs> You're still getting better. I know. So. I know. I've yeah. been practicing. But been pra we'll, we'll do tricks here in a minute. We we made the um, we made the bare bones uh, as something that someone could get into, but retain all the balance and performance characteristics of all our other models. You know, so that was really important because you you know you can you can make a cheap knife. But if it doesn't handle the same way, or if you skimp out of materials, then really what's the point, right? right? We wanted something that you could get and it's gonna last you a lifetime and have the balance where you can actually learn something. You know, so uh, I know, you know, some people might say 225 is, uh, still might be high for entry level, but when we say entry level, we mean entry level for BRS. Sure. Yeah, you know, so. And I think there's a distinct difference yeah. there. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then when we set out to make the uh, the trainer, uh, we made obviously it's a, it's a little bit less. But one thing that's distinctive about about the trainer and and the and the, the live blade is we use the um, we use the exact same steel nice. as the replicant and all the way up to the alpha piece. It's heat treated one five four cm. Yeah. Even the trainer blade is heat treated. Nice. You know, because again, it's got to be ready to Get know, dropped all be, over. Get yeah. dropped yeah. and you know resist impact and everything. So, uh, and again, it uses the same heat treated hardware. So, it's really not. Uh, it's got stainless steel handles, which is the the biggest difference between these. Yeah. Right? But in terms of performance and the, and the blade material and everything, still delivers a, a very high value. Nice. Do you want to see my tricks? Yeah. Look, I can open it. There you go. And then I've been working on this guy. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. It's hard in front of the table, guys. Let me, let me try again. Oh, okay, I'm going to quit. You show me a trick. All right. Let's, let's... It's hard over a table, it, yeah? It is, over, It is because you, right. you don't really have the, the, the balance, you know? <laughs> no, I, so it's funny. I, I came back from Blade Show last year. And I got all this criticism online because everyone's like, you talk about these butterfly knives and you don't even flip them. I'm like, well. <laughs> and right about the same time as when the trainers kind of, there were several trainers that hit the market at the same time. I'm like, all right, I can, I can yeah. learn this. Yeah. Um, in fact, it was kind of funny. One day, one of the guys in the shop handed me his, his bally. And uh, I thought it had a trainer blade on it. So I just started like doing my little aerial tricks and stuff. Like, like I got this, this fancy one like that. No, not like that. I got a little fancy arrow. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, and I just did them, and, and then I, I looked down, and I'm like, dude, this is a live blade. Oh, my <laughs> <He's> God. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. But I, it's it's interesting because for me, if I were going to get into it hardcore, I would – some people will say tape the blade. Yeah. Do that sort of yeah. thing. For me personally, I think I would I would go on the trainer route and yeah. then start to go into a live blade. Um I've got enough stitches without yes, yeah, flipping. Yeah, uh, you guys are that. the guys that flip are hardcore. Yes, like yeah, our, 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 hats off. The the community is is awesome. You saw in Bali Comp this year. <laughs> Uh, people really, really push the limit. So yeah. um, the sport's continuing to progress. Our products are continuing to progress. And, um, you know, I see that as kind of something that uh, goes side, you know, hand in hand. I yeah. mean, the, the origin was, was from feedback of the, from the community. And the progression of it was also from feedback and the progression of the community, you yeah. know, so Love it. that's a huge part of our story and we want to, we want to keep it that way for sure. Love it. Yeah. So we, we brought Lawrence, Lawrence came out and he actually brought, uh, Bill Boyd with him as well. Yes. Bill, come on camera, man. <laughs> he doesn't know this is happening. Yeah. He's, he's been standing behind the, the camera the whole time. So, so Bill is one of the flippers in the community and, uh, he has no idea what's that what's, what's happening. In fact, <laughs> his face is red because he didn't know this was about to happen. Um, but Bill, like, why do you flip a BRS knife versus something else? Um, I can trust it, you know. Um, I'm flipping over concrete quite a bit. Um, I don't have to worry about them breaking primarily. Um, quality for, for value. Nice. Will you, uh, will you do a trick for us? Sure. Here, g give these good people a good trick. Good trick? Oh, man. It's kind of a cramped space. I, I recognize Putting that. Putting him on the spot. He, right. he performs under pressure, though. I know. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at that. I love it. That was a good trick. 
See, that's what I was trying to do, guys. I just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what you meant. No, that's super yeah. cool. Bill also loves he loves knife banter. So yes. Bill, you've I'm a been huge on. Fan. You're on knife banter. Where can they find you on the internet? Um, you can find me at Sir Billiam with an underscore on Instagram. Um, you can find me at Sir Billiam on YouTube, and that's about it. Love it, Lawrence. Where can they find you on the internet? Uh, BladeRunnerSystems.com at BladeRunnerSystems on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And uh, we have all our updates on our website, Solid. social media. Yep. There it is. Guys, if you have questions about ballet songs, leave them down in the comments. Lawrence, I'd imagine you're on YouTube. You can jump in there, answer a few of those. Yes, absolutely. Um, that sort of thing. Honestly, guys, if you are serious about butterfly knives, about ballet songs, this is where you're eventually going to end up, is with a BRS in your hands. So check them out. You can buy them at bladehq.com. Guys, we'll have another video coming out for you next week. He hates being in front of the camera, but we've got him there now. So this is gonna be here. Learning ballet tricks. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Some of the best masters in the world. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So oh yeah, this is the good stuff. <laughs>